urged United States to stop interfering in other countries' domestic affairs. We call on the State Department uh, to stop trying to interfere in other countries' domestic affairs, not just in word, but in deed, tweeted Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova. Without considering and respecting its partners' interests, these noble causes will remain simple declarations, she added. Ethiopia says government continues to highly prioritize providing life-saving humanitarian assistance in the Tigray region. A press release by Minister of Foreign Affairs today indicates government is to take concrete measures to address the alleged human rights violations. Santayo Tamrat has more from the statement of the press. In a press statement released late in the afternoon Friday on the latest situation in the Tigray region, the ministry indicated that, with the successful conclusion of the law enforcement operation, the most important priority of the Ethiopian government in the Tigray region continues to be providing life-saving humanitarian assistance to the affected people. In this regard, the government has taken concrete measures to comprehensively respond to the dear humanitarian needs on the ground, including by reallocating its meager resources from other priority areas, and close to 40 billion bar has been allotted for food assistance. Therefore, it should be noted that the Ethiopian government is so far covering 70% of the food assistance from its resources, while only the remaining 30% is covered by development partners and NGOs, the statement explained. The ongoing relief operations have so far reached out to nearly 4 million people, and all-out efforts are being made to reach out to every single person in need in the region. Despite the progress made thus far, the government recognizes that the humanitarian needs on the ground remain enormously huge. That is why it is appealing to bilateral and multilateral partners to scale up their support. The government is ready to do the necessary needs assessment jointly with partners, the ministry said in the statement. Based on its continuous engagement with the international community, the Ethiopian government has made major policy decisions recently to address some of the concerns that have been raised. In this connection, the government has made its firm and unwavering commitment not only to provide unfettered access to the delivery of humanitarian assistance, but also to ensure its implementation on the ground. With the improvement of the security situation on the ground, most areas of the region are now accessible, and a notification process has been put in place to allow humanitarian actors to travel to the region and operate without much difficulty, the statement added. The government has made clear its unequivocal position concerning human rights abuses and crimes allegedly committed in the Tigray region. In this regard, it has reaffirmed its full commitment to undertake thorough investigations to get to the bottom of the issue and bring perpetrators to justice, it said. The relevant Ethiopian authorities and the Independent Ethiopian Human Rights Commission are undertaking the necessary investigative work that will enable the government to take concrete measures to comprehensively address the alleged serious human rights violations and bring the perpetrators of serious crimes to justice, the statement noted. In this context, the government not only welcomed the support of international human rights experts, but also signaled the possibility of collaboration on joint investigations with the relevant human rights bodies. Discussion is underway with the relevant stakeholders to look at modalities for its implementation. Furthermore, the government is facilitating access to both local and international media to travel to the region and do their journalistic work. It is also committed to addressing any issues that may arise in relation to their work.
Equally important is the need for both local and international media to follow the rules and observe the necessary code of conduct, the statement said. In conclusion, the statement said, the government is always ready and willing to engage with the international community in a positive and constructive manner to effectively respond to the humanitarian situation in the Tigray region. It appeals to the international community to understand the complexity of the challenge and work with the government to scale up the ongoing relief and reconstruction efforts to restore lasting peace and normalcy in the region. The ministry underlined that access is adequately created, hence it would be pointless to call for access anymore. The situation in Tigray calls for concrete actions, and that is food and medical assistance. Meanwhile, despite attempts by some foreign powers to intervene in the internal affairs of the country, the UN meeting has ended with no agreement. The UN meeting was requested by the US, the UK, France, Norway, Ireland and Estonia, which have expressed growing concern about what they called continued hostilities in the region. There have been reports, despite the absence of official statement, that diplomats briefed on the talks uh, uh, Kenya, Tunisia, Niger, China and Russia have stood alongside Ethiopia. Well, now we found the spokesperson of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Dina Mufti, over the phone for an official voice from the Ethiopian government on this issue. Hello, Ambassador. Hello, Ambassador. Can you hear me? Hello, Ambassador. Well, I think uh, the race connection error. We'll, we'll get back to it whenever we found him. The credentials of five ambassadors today. The ambassadors also expressed keenness to strengthening relations between Ethiopia and their respective countries, notably on boosting investment and trade, among others. Kasan Jani reports. President Salor Gazzardi received the credentials of five ambassadors on Friday. The ambassadors who presented their credentials are Tamara Mona of Switzerland, Jin Kamau of the Republic of Kenya, Mohamed Ali Hassan of the Republic of Chad, Johnny Naba Jani of the Republic of Gambia, and Geta Parsi of the United States of America, respectively. During the occasion, President Salor briefed the ambassadors on about the need of strengthening bilateral relationship and continuing to far to expand existing in relations and explore new venues between Ethiopia and their respected countries, according to a foreign affairs spokesperson and public diplomacy director general, Ambassador Dina Mufti, who attended the summit. The ambassadors of five countries have presented their credentials to Your Excellency the President, uh, President Salwar Zaudi, the, the President of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. These ambassadors are from uh, Switzerland. Kenya, uh, Chad, uh, Gambia, uh, the United States. Uh, all ambassadors have reiterated their commitment to work toward strengthening bilateral relationship with Ethiopia. Uh, they have shown their keen interest of promoting the relationship with Ethiopia. Uh, Her Excellency the President also briefed them on the current situation in Ethiopia, particularly on the activities after the law enforcement in the northern part of the country and the process of reconstructions and rehabilitations in Tigray. And uh, they have briefed them in details and they have already, uh, he, she has shown them what Ethiopia is doing with regard to opening up of the, of the, of the northern part, with regard to collaborative investigations of the allegations of the human rights and of on upgrading the relief efforts as well. Uh, in general, the, the whole process had been successful and uh, it had been accomplished accordingly. Okay. 
You are welcome. Have a nice day. These newly appointed ambassadors to Ethiopia on their part expressed their commitment to improve the relations between Ethiopia and their respective countries in many ways. Um, it is a great honor to meet um, Madam President and present my letters to her and to extend the greetings of my president, His Excellency Adam Abaro, to all the people of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and to also extend the greetings of my Honorable Minister, Dr. Mamadou Tangara, the Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation and Gambians Abroad of the Republic of the Gambia. I, as I said, I have the honor to present my credentials today and discuss with Madam President, strengthening the bilateral ties between our two nations um, in the areas of tourism, in the areas of agriculture, in the areas of sports, capacity building, and several other areas where uh, it can be of mutual benefit between our two countries. And um, obviously another great honor was to present to Madam President on the weekend before the celebration of International Women's Day. Um, she has broken, as they uh, say, a lot of uh, glass ceilings and achieved so much, which is an inspiration not only to myself, but to millions of young women out there in the world. And um, I have had the honor of meeting the various members of her office and also from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs over here and to extend my gratitude to the warm welcome that I have received from every single person that I have met in my short stay in, in, in Ethiopia so far. I look forward to a successful tenure and as I had mentioned before, strengthening the bilateral ties between the Republic of the Gambia and the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. According to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson and Public Diplomacy Director General Ambassador Dina, Ethiopia has been always striving to enhance multifactored bilateral ties with all countries through exerting its maximum efforts for mutual benefit. Well, I think I'm now joined over the phone by Ambassador Dina Mufti, spokesperson of the Ethiopian Minister of Foreign Affairs. Hello, Ambassador. Hello, Ambassador. Can you hear me? Hello, Ambassador. I think we have lost him again. Moving on. Ethiopian President Salok Zode calls upon Ethiopians to embark on eradicating poverty to defend international pressure that comes with foreign aid. The President makes a remark while laying the foundation stone of the $2.2 billion Lamy National Cement Industrial Complex to be built in the state of Amhara. Salok on the occasion says foreign powers will continue twisting hands like what they are trying to do it now as long as the country remains poor and vulnerable. With more on this story. The $2.2 billion National Cement Industrial Complex, which was commenced yesterday at Lemmi in Saro district of the state of Amhara, is a joint venture between the age-old conglomerate East African holdings on the Ethiopian side and the West International Holding on the Chinese side. <laughs> Apart from the cement factory, the huge industrial complex consists of seven other factories, including gypsum board, mirror, and other construction materials. Upon completion, the cement factory under the industrial complex will be the biggest in Africa in terms of production capacity. Speaking on the groundbreaking ceremony, President of Ethiopia, Salor Zode, reminded the Ethiopian people and government of the importance of defeating poverty to remain free of foreign interference. Yelemi National Cement to Action Mother, Yel Industry Complex Gimbata, Kakabavi Belai, Bahagarak F. Dereja, Bedinetlai, the Middago Zemecha. Our main enemy is poverty. Embarking on such huge mega projects is a critical move forward to emancipate ourselves from foreign aid dependency. The so-called superpowers will always try to twist our hands whenever they find us in terrible like the situation we are in right now. We will never walk with our heads straight as long as we are dependent of foreign aid. So we all should cooperate and forge war against poverty, thereby liberating ourselves. <laughs> 
የሚገጥማቸውን ችግሮች እግር በእግር እየተከታተልን መፍታት ይኖርብናል Stechivo Vamahara Genyo Tashaga for his part underscored the need to ease the bureaucratic system in the government to attract more huge investments. Yihin miyakil tilik guzuf fabrika guzuf ye industry park gembuten power kalelle turgumello. It becomes useless to build such a huge industrial complex if we fail to provide power supply. So I would like to urge all government officials present here to think of this alarming issue. Our state remained deprived of such infrastructures for the past 3 decades because of political conspiracy. The Amhara state is one of the least regional states that enjoyed minimal power supply. The regional government will do its level best to assure both local and international investors who are interested to invest in our regional state. Chairs of the two giant companies also pledged to finish the project as per the schedule. The area is an ideal place to produce cement and other construction materials. <laughs> Upon fully operational, this industrial complex will have an immense role in the country's economy through supplying the booming construction sector with cement and other construction materials. It will also generate foreign currency for the country. We chose Ethiopia to have a joint venture business because we were blessed to have a friend like Dr. Bezoyo Tadele who is the chairman of East African Holding. We are also happy to invest here in Ensaro where abundant raw material is found. We can assure you that the industrial complex will impact the country's construction sector. Bakul tagabi ya policy gazana digaf ba nigdu mahabrasa kersata Ethiopian There is no way that private companies and entrepreneurs will remain local if they get the opportunity and fair play ground to penetrate the international market. It is therefore mandatory to bring the government's private business policy into effect to let our Ethiopian business play their part in the country's economy as well as in the international business. We are committed to finish this huge investment with our partner West International with the support of the government. The first phase of the construction of the industrial complex which includes the cement factory and two other huge firms will be executed in the coming 18 months with a slated capital of 600 million dollars. The cement factory has the capacity to produce 10,000 tons of cement per day it was learned. African Union has unanimously endorsed the candidature of Ethiopia's Dr. Kaba Kobai, the sole African candidate for the post of Director General of the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO. The union endorsed Dr. Kaba's candidature during its 38th ordinary session of the Executive Council held on 3 and 4 February 2021, said the union in a statement issued today. Kaba spent more than 30 years at the forefront of implementing inclusive and sustainable industrial development policies and as a, cha a champion of transformational economic development in Africa. Africa leaders emphasized the importance of UNIDO being led by a competent director general and voiced their confidence in the world-class caliber of our Kaba's candidature, including his formidable leadership qualities to ensure equitable and sustainable global industrialization. Ethiopians have commemorated the 43rd anniversary of the Karamara victory in Addis Ababa today at the Ethiopia-Cuba Friendship Memorial Park. March 5, 1978 marked the victory of the Ethiopian army over the invading Somalian army under the leadership of President Said Barre. Thousands of presidents, residents of Addis Ababa along with the survivors of the Battle of Karamara patriots have observed this, the celebration held to commemorate the victory of Ethiopia over uh, Somalian invaders. Habtama Shagri presents the story as follows. Following the 1974 Ethiopian revolution, Ethiopia was weakened by an internal power struggle. The then Somalian president Said Barre thought it was opportune time to go after his dream of creating Greater Somalia. 
He planned to take the Somali-speaking part of Ethiopia by force and merge it with the rest of Somalia under his leadership. Initially, it seemed he could realize it. His mechanized army was able to occupy lands in Ethiopia beyond the Somali-speaking parts of Ethiopia. Colonel Mengistu Haile Mariam, then leader of the transitional government of Ethiopia, embarked on a massive mobilization scheme to dialogue Somali troops from Ethiopia and reverse the invasion. In a matter of three months, as many as 300,000 militiamen were conscripted and trained for a counter-offensive against invading Somalian forces. Therefore, on March 5, 1978, marked the victory of Ethiopian army over the invading Somalian army under leadership of President Said Bari. Today, the 40th anniversary of the Karamara victory has been commemorated here in Addis Ababa at the Ethiopia Friendship Memorial Park. Speaking on the occasion, advisor to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia, Bekuma Merdasa, said the new generation should take good lessons from forefathers and mothers' sacrifices for their country's sovereignty. We have to inherit the bravery of our forefathers and mothers to keep the sovereignty of the country. We have to know that it's everyone's responsibility to keep the unity and sovereignty of the nation. Thus, I need to urge all Ethiopians to stand in unison on the national interests of our country. About 16,000 Cubans, including advisors, fought alongside Ethiopia, as well hundreds of Yemen troops fought on the side of Ethiopia. The Ethiopia Friendship Statue is erected in commemoration of that. That's why Cuban ambassador to Ethiopia, Vilma Thomas, said the victory of Karamara was led a milestone to solidify bilateral ties of the two countries. Today, we honor all of them, and especially those who paid the highest sacrifice, offering their life to preserve the territorial integrity and sovereignty of this nation. Alongside the Ethiopian martyrs, there were also 163 Cubans that, guided by the principle of international solidarity, shed their life for Ethiopia, and whose contribution is acknowledged in this beautiful park, testimony of the bonds of friendship between our peoples. On the occasion, residents of Addis Ababa expresses that the coming generation need to capitalize the victory of Karamara as a key instrument to cement the nation's unity. So a reminder of our top stories. UN Security Council session on Tigray ends with no agreement. And Russia calls the U.S. to stop interfering in domestic affairs of other countries. Well, that's it for the news for Mr. Lomondang and the rest of the English team here in the studio. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.